Um, yeah. Also, so so looking at this from a well broader historical perspective, uh, since the growth economy that we have uh, uh, developed and has spread across the world and, and which has proliferated the phenomenon of greed, uh, since it is so <laughs> unsustainable to such a high degree, uh, it stands to reason that it will cannot last. It will be a historical period where, where this will happen and at some point in the future uh, things will be different. So. Um, why would one spend time discussing these issues? Well, well, the perspective, sensible perspective, would be: How can we, this far down the road, still transition sensibly? Uh, because that is entirely possible uh, by by getting rid of the people that are abusing the system. Right. Because it's not the actual humans that's at fault. It's um, it's the people that perpetuate the system. But and this is why the, the side guys that are very uh, right when they talk about this being a systemic flaw. It's, it's, it's not about human beings, it's not about nature, it's not scientific, it's about uh, things like artificial scarcity. Let's, uh, let's move into that, the next part of, of understanding and decoding the system. Because um, artificial scarcity is such a, it's just a, an important thing to understand. Um, I, I might need to go into the last one, the middleman scam also, because otherwise artificial scarcity really doesn't make any sense. Um, the story about the the well in the village, mm -hmm. where the villagers decide to come together and, 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 and build a well uh, to get easier access to, to water, drinking water. Mm -hmm. um, when the well is ready, then it's on someone's land. Either it's on the government land, uh, common land, or it's on an individual's land. If there's someone managing this well, uh, and he decides to take a fee for servicing the people, this is still within uh, the realm of fairness, because he needs to live as well. And if he's supplying a service, of course, he needs uh, some benefits from that. But then what he will do is he will figure out that the if he can induce an artificial demand and reduce alternative supplies, that's going to benefit his pull. It, it's going to give him uh, more influence and thus he's going to be able to raise the price. Mm -hmm. This is fundamental supply and demand. Um, so he is not interested in someone else having a well or say an alternative like uh, being able to use rainwater from uh, the roofs. So if he can get the, uh, the, the, the roof guy to create drainage systems say with lead, mm -hmm. so we can then have a rule that says it's a bad idea to drink rainwater because rainwater apparently makes people crazy. And then there's no alternative. Then he's creating uh, a dependency. Mm -hmm. The same if, 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 if one of his neighbors got a smaller well and he can buy that land and then shut that well down, he has now created artificial scarcity. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, one of the, the, the best examples in the real world that, that we know about um, is something like... Um, De Beers and their diamond mines. The the real value of diamonds, if you consider supply and demand and the availability of diamonds, should be maybe a tenth of the current price because they're basically just shutting down potential mines, mm -hmm. and they are storing uh, for posterity um, because there's not a de there's not enough demand. So they're just they are supply they're controlling supply. This is what the whole De Beers system is about. It's about controlling supply, limiting it. Right. Also, I mean, you you could question what would be the real demand for diamonds in a you know a non-growth economy where there wasn't a, an artificially created surplus that needs to be spent on something. Because most what what diamonds are mostly demanded for uh, as you know, superficial luxury products, who 
sends a signal and uh, that has a status attached to it within the social context yeah, simple, yeah, simply because they are, have been made artificially rare. Yeah, yeah but that's, that just takes us into a whole different thing about creating uh, an artificial demand and the whole meritocracy thing. But that's really not the important thing to understand. What's, what's the key is understanding what artificial scarcity is and how it is being perpetrated towards. So just to, to bring on that, I mean, the, the, the example with the uh, roofing made of lead and, and plumbing made of uh, lead for, for rainwater is not grasped from thin air, that's a historical fact, that's how yeah, but it happened. <coughs> Whether or not it was planned, I don't really know, I'm not going to claim that it was, <coughs> but the fact is that the result was that you could not drink that water. <coughs> 